I just saw the sun, the moon, and the stars of Stratford East. Well done. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a fine, it's a fine piece um, of work. This is your first play, your first. Yes, school? my first produced play. Yeah. Oh yes. wow. Yeah. Tell me about um, the form of the play and the use of language. It's a monologue, and um, I, I generally don't like monologues. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was thinking about how I wanted to um, tell this story, I wanted to tell it in a way where there was a clash between who Femi is as a character and the language she uses, and mm -hmm. the language she uses to tell the story. Um, and so I decided to like veer into poetry and um, play with rhythm in that way and play with language. She uses words like alas, which no one really uses. I really wanted to just play about with it. Did you think that brought anything to Femi herself as a character? Because there's the world of the play mm. and there's the language that Femi uses to describe her world. Mm. Is there, was there a division or difference between that? And do you think that brought anything to Femi as a character? Yeah, I think what it brought to Femi was the fact that she sees this ghost and it adds to the magic realism mm -hmm. nature of like the world she's suddenly been thrown into. She's seeing her brother's ghost. That jars her world. Like the world is no longer the same. And so the language she's using isn't the same. She's trying to figure out the world again. She's trying to figure out what it means to her and how it impacts her life. And so I felt like the lang changing language from how she would have naturally spoken felt like showing that distinction between what was her life and what is her life as we see in the play. Mm. So Femi essentially is going through a mourning process about the death of her twin brother. Yeah. Shil. Um, so why not just a sibling relationship? Why twins? It didn't become twins actually until Nadia and I started developing the play together. Um, and because and the reason that happened is because everyone that had read the script assumed they were twins and right. so I was like okay what does it mean that people think that they're twins and what would it look like and how would that shift the bond and once I started looking into that it did feel like they were an extension of one another mm. um, and speaking to people who are twins the bond that they actually have with their twin is very different than, than the bond they have with other siblings um, and that was what I was really interested in interrogating, like how close Femi and Sharon are to one another and how it's more than just sibling love. It's mm. like they were in the same room together and how that has changed their relationship. I'm a twin as well. Are you? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I twisted that. Well, we beefed a lot when we were kids. Mm. I think I've had maybe one fight in my whole life. I'm a deep pacifist yeah. and, you know, and, I'm, and she kicked my ass. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with... Even though I'm 10 minutes older, I feel as if she's always been the dominant twin. Mm. Um, and I've never held it against her. She's just yeah, been yeah, yeah. You know, the closest person in my life. Um, but when we were kids and we first went to primary school, I'll never forget this. I threw a tantrum in the assembly when I discovered we we're not going to be in the same classroom. <laughs> and my twin sister just walked away. She just walked <laughs> in the classroom, she didn't even turn around. Tell me a little bit about black female rage and how that differs from black masculine rage, if there is a mm. difference and what you're trying to explore. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, the distinction as an observer is that black female rage tends to be more informed, I think. Mm -hmm. I think there tends to be a lot more analysis of emotions, um, uh, whereas I think black male rage tends to be like the emotion driving it. Um, and so even in Femi's case, like she, at the very beginning of the play, she's just happy to go for this trial and see it as what it is until she gets the information from Sean taking her into the past. And so she's now fighting with evidence. She's fighting with something that's bigger than herself. She knows exactly what happened because she watched it replay. Um, and I think that feels like the distinction. Whereas if it was maybe the other way around, I could imagine Sharon just fighting from the very beginning um, without really sitting down to like think about it logically or rationally. And Femi doesn't always do that, but I think that's where she starts from, from that, mm. from having gone into the past. I want to talk a little bit about names now. Mm. So the siblings are called Femi and Sharon, yeah. but in the play she talks to, you know, the traditional name given to twins being Taiwa and Kende. Mm. Um, and you could have named them Tawa and Kende. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was wondering why. The thing about Tawa and Kende is that they're, they're not 
chosen mm -hmm. like they're given to you because, default, that, because yeah, yeah exactly if you're born into whereas Europe, like, yeah that. exactly completely yeah and so whereas um femi and shell felt specific to them and i don't remember the exact meanings off the top of my head but it was yeah. like thinking about what those w what those names meant and why their parents chose it and why it was specific to each of them and their journeys within the play yeah um, and so that's why i didn't go for Tyro and kende once they did become twins in the play okay. um one of the things that I liked about you know, not doing that is that you included that in the play. Mm. So we got to see just how rich Yoruba culture yes, is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. completely. Um, I wanted to ask you about the family of this play. Mm. If this play was the younger sibling, who would be the older sibling? The, you know, are there other texts that you think speak, that this, speak, this play speaks to? I was heavily influenced um, in general by uh, Beloved by Toni Morrison um, mm -hmm. and when I read I that, it that, felt yeah. like, it ju yeah, it just felt like the story I was trying to tell, but in a much better way. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay, no, I can see people, like, this can be done, this, and that gave me a lot of freedom to write this on the moon and the stars. The, a play that influenced me as well was um, Hamlet by Shakespeare. But there was lots of work that influenced me in terms of giving me freedom with my style, giving me freedom mm. to, like, let go of language. And, like, so I read... A lot of Wale Shoyinka, I read um, Debbie Tucker Green, I read Susan Nori Parks, and those three I, I feel like, in terms of language and me feeling like I could let go and like, just write in a, with, with tone and play with language and play with atmosphere, like those three were, those three authors, like across several plays, like were really influential for mm. me, yeah. Who would you want um, to see the play besides the general audiences and, and, um, People from Stratford who mm. who have come to this building, you know, since it opened, etc., and the extended families. But if there was someone specific, <laughs> I, it might feel random. But I would love Viola Davis to see the play. Okay, it's such a random choice, but no, I mean, it's not random for me. But um, it's like w it's interesting because when I, um, if with if I'm thinking like anyone in the world that I don't know, that's mm -hmm. who it would be. Because when, I think when I watch her on screen, I've never seen her on stage. Um, but there's something about the vulnerability and the power and yeah, the um, and the command that she has that actually when I was writing this play I was like what role would I want to give Viola Davis if she was like in her twenties mm -hmm. and the roles that like her generation never got at that age um, and so it's just like in terms of someone that I know could have that power but I hadn't gotten those opportunities and I think like those kind of generation of actresses in particular um, I want them to see this play and know that there's hope for like future generations yeah. and that hopefully more plays will be made where black talents are able to shine and so it's I would say Viola Davis but that just represents a, a whole, yeah, a, yeah a range of yeah. people that sit in that space congratulations thank you